Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 15th of March, and it's National Napping Day. And a big happy birthday to Will I Am, Mark Hoppers, Kim Raver, and Eva Longoria. Wednesday is Budget Day, and as we anticipate Chancellor Jeremy Hunt's announcement, you're probably thinking the nation's finances couldn't get any worse, could they? Well, so far, families seem to be at the top of the agenda. In a surprise move leaked on Tuesday evening, the Chancellor looks set to promise 30 hours of free childcare a week to parents of one- and two-year-olds. But before anything concrete's announced, Labour are focusing on energy costs, with Shadow Minister Tulip Sadiq laying out her hopes for the spring budget. We want to raise more from the windfall tax, but the other thing we've talked about if there is headroom, we'd like to freeze fuel duty, and that's what we've said to the government. Some of Hunt's plans have been controversial, including the expected introduction around pensions, where the amount workers can accumulate before paying extra tax looks set to be increased. Laura Lambie, Senior Investment Director at Investec, says this is focused on getting over 50s back into work. I think he's hoping that it's going to encourage individuals who are perhaps in their 50s who've retired early um, post-COVID to come back to work so that they can make significant contributions to their pension. His wallet may need to be opened a little wider if we're to avoid more industrial action, though. Half a million people are due to go on strike across the UK on Wednesday. Meanwhile, the Chancellor's been criticised for failing to offer any new policies to help struggling businesses. James Reid of Reid Recruitment says there's much more that could be done. I think there could be a lot more support for people who are, I don't like the phrase, economically inactive. And I think more could be done to support uh, people with young families around childcare so that they can also go back to work and apply for jobs. Beijing has issued a stark warning to Western powers after the UK, US and Australia unveiled plans for nuclear submarines to counter China's influence in the Indo-Pacific region. China accused them of travelling down a dangerous and wrong path over the hashtag AUKUS deal. Spokesperson Wang Wenbin made the remarks during a regular press conference. The latest joint statement issued by the US, UK and Australia shows that the three countries have gone further down the wrong and dangerous path for their own geopolitical self-interest completely ignoring the concerns of the international community. But Australian analyst Craig Stockings from the University of New South Wales says the AUKUS pact's a necessary venture for Australia and for the deterrence of war in the region. It requires the other side to believe there is the capability to act on the deterrent threat. That's things like submarines and also re- relies on the political will to underpin that intent. That's what AUKUS is. More bad news for Matt Hancock. TikTok looks like it could be banned from government phones. Home Office Minister Tom Tugendhat has asked government cyber security experts to look at the risks posed by the social media app. Understanding exactly what the challenges that these apps pose and what they are asking for and how they're reaching into our lives is incredibly important. That's why I've asked the National Cyber Security Centre to look into this. It comes after Rishi gave the orders to look at what the US, EU and Canada have done in banning the use of TikTok on all government registered phones. The controversial Chinese-owned video sharing apps under the microscope over concerns it could be used to promote pro-Beijing views or gather user data. The EU and more than half of US states and Congress have already introduced a ban over fears of potential cyber attacks and Tory MP Alicia Kearns backs something similar. The reality is that TikTok is essentially a Trojan horse for data. And we know that the Chinese government is trying to acquire as much data as possible. And we know that Chinese officials have access to European data. Tensions are rising between America and Russia after a US drone was brought down by Russian jets in international airspace. The incident occurred on Tuesday and took place over the Black Sea, close to the conflict in Ukraine. The downing of the $32 million drones resulted in the summoning of the Russian ambassador to the US State Department to discuss the issue. A Pentagon press secretary said that the MQ-9 drone was chased and had fuel dropped on it by the Russian fighters before it eventually crashed. Uh, To recap, at approximately 7.03 a.m. Central European time, one of the Russian Su-27 aircraft struck the propeller of the MQ-9, causing U.S. forces to have to bring the MQ-9 down in international waters. This incident demonstrates a lack of competence in addition to being unsafe and unprofessional. Still to come on the Smart 7, The Little Mermaid makes a big splash and what a night for Man City. Right after this. Welcome back. Three. 
Action in the Champions League on Tuesday night saw Inter Milan hold off Porto to join AC in the quarterfinals. But it was the quarterfinal playoffs that gave all the drama as Man City's Erling Haaland scored an unbelievable five goals in their game against RP Leipzig. After 45 minutes, Haaland had scored a hat-trick, his fifth of the season, and he went on to score a further two goals in what was a historic night for the club and the number nine player. A lot of goals today, I didn't think. I was just uh, doing it uh, on the penalty. I was just trying to get the, the ball into the back of the net. Same with the second goal. Uh, same with the third goal. Uh, same with every goal. I didn't think on every single goal. So uh, I think a lot of it is just being quick in the mind and trying to do the right thing. Yellow Jacket Season 2's out, everyone. Never heard of it? We should have done. It's brilliant. The series tells the story of a team of high school girls soccer players who survived a plane crash deep in the Ontario wilderness and then descend into cannibalistic clans. Sound pretty wild? Well, it is. And the first series scored a whopping 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, so we're certainly down for Season 2. And so's the star, Queen of Creepy, Christina Ritchie, who reflected on the vibe on set after it got renewed. There's been a lot of like hype and build-up about how good everything is. I like to come in like with low expectations and then be like a, a pleasant surprise. Um, this, is, this is really killing that whole mode for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was really scary. I mean, it's so wonderful to be so well received and the accolades and everything, but then you have to go back and do it again. It's been a long time swimming, but The Little Mermaid's finally making waves. Disney unveiled a new trailer for the underwater classic and sees Halle Bailey play Ariel in Rob Marshall's fairy tale musical. It also stars Javier Bardem and Melissa McCarthy and tells the classic tale, but with real people. Disney's track record with live action remakes has been a bit hit and miss, but this one seems to have gone swimmingly. Check it out for yourself. This obsession with humans has to stop. I just want to know more about them. Poor child. I can help you. You can't live in that world unless you become a human yourself. Is that even possible? That's <laughs> what I live for. This has been the Smart Seven. Wherever you're listening, do us a favor and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced, and published by Daft Dog.